welcome back, welcome to the racing channel. We're gonna get right into it. So this is gonna be part 12 of our motor swap turbo build on Project Blitz. Uh, hopefully this week we're gonna drive this thing. That's the plan. So we have a few things we gotta check off that list before we're able to actually try and key this thing over and take her out on the street. One of those things is gonna be the drive shaft, which Cody is actually underneath the car doing right now. We're gonna be working on putting a pedal in so we actually have throttle. We already got the clutch bled. Uh, Got to put a seat in there, a few other things, a few more odds and ends, and maybe zip tie some of this wiring back up that we pulled back down so that we can actually get in the car without tearing it all up. So we're just going to get right to it. Well, after Cody made a valid attempt to try and put in our new drive shaft, uh, it doesn't fit. So ultimately what ended up happening, if you look down here, this guy is substantially longer at the U-joint than the original. So Cody took down the Miata drive shaft, told them we were going to be mating it to an Opal. They ordered this U-joint holder and gave us this U-joint. They never asked for the spec on this. So we should have taken this drive shaft down, but they never asked us what this was going to be. So unfortunately, we're going to have to take this back down there probably with the other one and have them recut it again. Unfortunately, this is a little bit of a setback, but we're going to be able to deal with that a little bit later. We got to move on to something we can actually control right now. And I think we're going to move on to trying to put the seat in. We can't really figure out where the shifter location is going to be to make our shifter or mount our gas pedal until we know where the seat's going to actually end up. With the seat in the position that makes it so he can reach the pedals most effectively, we might change the offset on the steering wheel later, but he can reach the pedals comfortably and we know kind of where the seat's going to end up. In that ballpark, we're starting to look at where the shifter's going to be. So go ahead and throw your hand out where you want it randomly. So he's thinking about there, so try and stay there as best you can. Mm -hmm. So I've been bending up this steel rod to get it somewhere in the ballpark. So I've just been using a torch, heating this, and bending it. So we're gonna put one more bend in it, start trimming it up and get it tacked into place and see if we can put that shifter somewhere that's somewhat uh, ergonomic. Ergonomic. And then we'll run it through the gears and see what it looks like. Yeah. So that's the final shape. A little bit wonky. It does seem strange, but it makes it so that the, the large deficit of space between here and here is made up and it's pretty ergonomic considering he, sit, he sits much further forward than I do in my car. So I, I, I have the long. room too. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and get that tacked and weld it up and see how it looks. Yep. It's warm. How's that? So if you're gentle, you should be able to try to ruin the gears a little. There's our shifter. So we might mess with that a little bit later and end up changing where the final position of the ball is. Uh, when you're driving blind, when you're just shifting it by hand, it does feel like any other shifter, but you can see from where we're sitting that it actually changes the leverage all up and down as opposed to forward and back because of this extension. So I think we're gonna end up having to do something shorter later on because with this turbo combination, his rear gears, uh, this thing might be going through gears rowing fast enough that he's going to need something really short to keep up with it. But for now, that'll get us moving. Uh, it's, not, it's not bad. It's pretty comfortable. So It's pretty comfortable. Until we start competing with it, it's really not going to matter. It's probably fine for cru cruising around on the highway. So that'll get us moving. Okay. I don't even know if I can go that far back yet, really. There we go. 
So way down here, you can see what we've done is we have cut all of the excess material off of the Miata throttle pedal. And it runs up right there on the other side of the steering column and down there between the firewall. And it's a little tighter there because we knocked a big dent in it to put our turbo right there. So it's even tighter than it would normally be. Uh, we got a couple of self tappers in it for now. Until we actually drive the thing, we're not gonna know how ergonomic that is or if that's gonna work out for actually driving on the road or more specifically for aggressive driving. So for now, it's just self tappered. If that stays put and we're happy with that, we'll go ahead and weld it up. But for now, we have a gas pedal. So now we just gotta get our uh, throttle cable hooked up. That's Monday night, we're done. We managed to get the throttle pedal mocked up. It's temporary, but it looks like it's gonna work just fine, so we might end up welding that later. Uh, the shifter's in place. We're happy with it for now. We can always go back and change that as well. Uh, everything is just kind of there until we know exactly what we want when we actually start doing a bunch of driving with the car. Uh, he's gonna have to take the drive shaft back to the drive shaft shop and figure out what to do with this because we can't reinstall it. So that's the main hurdle we're gonna have to try and face this week, but we can probably start doing something with the seat and start running the cable for the throttle. But I mean, we're, we're getting pretty close. Getting real close. That's it for Monday night though. It's Wednesday. Cody got the drive shaft dropped back off so they can go ahead and fix it, cut off the end, swap it for the one that goes to the Opal. Um, there's some complications with that that may or may not become an issue later, but for now, they're just gonna work that out. We're gonna go ahead and start working on trying to get the seat mounted because we need that mounted so that we can start working on everything else because, I mean, you can't drive without a seat. And we're gonna start working on putting the throttle cable in. So he's gonna work on mounts. We're gonna start working on the cable. So we can get done today. All right guys, that's it for Wednesday night. Got a little bit more progress done. Seat is mounted. Can shake the whole damn car with it. Throttle pedal is done. We've tested it. Throttle cable is completely installed. This is the factory Miata cable, fresh from Mazda. We might go a different route and get something a little bit longer. That way we can reroute this thing a little bit better. Because right now it's pretty close to the turbo and all the down piping that it's gonna get hot. So. Uh, shout out to Mishimoto, by the way, for getting us those little heat wraps. Got a couple more we're going to use. Uh, but for right now, that's that's pretty much it. I think the plan moving forward into tomorrow and Friday is passenger seat mounted, button up some of this wiring, kind of do a once over through the rest of the car, install a drive shaft, possibly. Uh, it's supposed to be here tomorrow, so we'll see. If we can do that, then that gets installed. We can test it and make sure that it actually loads up and we can do final once overs and get ready for Saturday. Okay, so we reused the Miata throttle pedal and I heated it up and bent it all curly Q to make it fit and it sucked. It sucked real bad. The leverage was all wrong. So we cut the rod off and changed that and changed where the leverage is. This is a thousand times better now. So I, I, I'm not even gonna waste my time pulling it back out to show you. It's better. That's the main thing. Uh, we insulated the hood try to keep some of that turbo heat off the fiberglass. Hopefully help keep everything from getting soft. Uh, Cody buttoned up some wiring. We did scan it with the OBD2 Bluetooth scanner and basically the only thing that's reading is we don't have an air box hooked up. So that's that's a good sign. Uh, good sign. Still no, still no drive shaft. We're hoping to get it tomorrow. If we get it tomorrow, we throw it in, pull it off the casters, off the skates, and see if we can get engagement and then it's getting ready for Saturday to actually try to break the clutch in. So, picked up a little something along the way. We got a drive shaft back. So, this is the Opal GTU joint. They were able to make a bushing onto the side of it, onto the back side of it, so that it could actually fit up to the size of the Miata shaft. They were able to get it a little bit balanced. They said it's pretty close. So, we'll see how it goes. Friday night, we finally made it, the week is over. We got a bunch of stuff we still need to knock out on this thing, and I mean, it's, it's just a lot of little tedious stuff. We're gonna change out the shift ball, we're gonna run some vacuum lines so he's got power brakes. He already got the drive shaft back and put back in. We're gonna try and go back and forth and make sure the clutch is working, so on and so forth. So, and we'll catch up with you guys in a little bit.
there you have it folks. We worked on a lot of stuff. There's a lot of things that we didn't cover in our time lapse, naturally. But Cody, cover some of the things we got done. All right, so it was low on fuel. We threw about four gallons into it. Nothing real special on that. Ended up going ahead and doing a little bit more work on our hood insulation and just did the entire inside of the skeleton just to help a little bit more with the heat deflection. I had a couple wires and a couple plugs that were not plugged in and we just wanted to mark off the list because it was running bad. I'll get to that in a second. I went ahead and threw some more heat insulation down underneath the exhaust. We bled the clutch again. It now has full throw in and out and it's been tested. Uh, we also threw a passenger seat into it. We threw a new shift knob on it because this big heavy weighted stainless steel one that D made for this car it's a little too heavy. It actually pulls the shifter down a little bit and we don't want that. So we just picked up a cheapo from, Am or from uh, AutoZone. It's super light and it gets the job done. We ended up going with the Mega Squirt PMP2. Here's the reason why. The reason why we did that, we noticed it was running really rough on the factory ECU. It was throwing engine codes. And the reason we were able to find that out is an OBD2 car and we have a Bluetooth OBD2 scanner that we were able to plug into the factory ECU and check codes. We noticed what codes it was pulling. We did a little bit more research on the PMP2, dug through some of our notes, found out that you can basically delete it as soon as it's plugged in. It actually pulls off of MAP, not MAF. Because we're turboed, we don't have stock intake anymore. Even though the turbo is not pushing air into the intake, there's no restriction, there's no MAF sensor at all. So going with the Mega Squirt now, key on it fires right up and it idles and purrs like a kitten so we have we've had zero issues since and we again were able to check that off of the obd2 a lot of little things a lot of progress we've tested it it moves we might have driven it more on that tomorrow So far, it looks like everything's working right. Check everything over. She is back. That was a full-on test drive. 
We're going to check a couple things over now that everything's heat cycled properly and we've actually got some heat into it. The fan was keeping up just fine. We heat cycled it last night, let it run, drove it up and down the driveway a few times to get the clutch kind of set in so we weren't just beating on it this morning. Uh, but, I mean, that was a success. So you're right. Between how it was running before... And now this is now. And how, how do how do you feel right now? Unboosted, just how I'm it sits. Elated. I mean, it runs. Boosted's going to be a whole other world. It's going to be a whole other experience. Well, I, I don't have words yet. I, I don't have words yet. It's for, for for first drive. What was the difference in in power oh, and the feel of the trans? It's the immediate. The the car feels solid. The Opal. Love it to death, but originally it was. It seemed like you're on a cloud. There was no sense of urgency to any of the powertrain, and now, by the time you even start getting through first gear, it wants to get up and go, and it's the thoroughbred compared to the Opal. It's completely different. It's it's 100 different, and well worth the time and energy and effort we've put into it. It's just, it's going to be exactly what we want it to be. I, it, you could tell, even, even butt dyno tells you it's, it's about double what it was putting down, so. This thing is, it's, it's going to be a monster. Let's, uh, let's button up some more stuff. Let's try and get some lights integrated here so we have a little bit more safety factor, throw in some seat belts maybe? Seat belts. And then uh, yes. maybe we'll go stretch your legs a bit more. Yes. So right now, uh, all we have is a Miata harness inside of this car and all the factory wiring for the Opal isn't really hooked to anything. So we're going to go ahead and integrate the two right now so that when he turns on the lights and tries to run everything normally on the dash, it works effectively. So we got to have both harnesses integrated with a key. So we're going to work on that and we'll get back at you when we get it all done. After several hours of integrating the original Opal wiring into the Miata harness, we have lights and they should all work. So Cody, who is very faithful in my ability to stick these things together, is going to go take it out at night with Daniel. So hopefully he comes back and all the lights still work. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. amazing. <laughs> and just like that, folks, we have driven the car. We have lights. Things work and stuff. A lot of fine tuning left to do. We're going to do a little bit of test driving, make sure everything works out exactly how we're hoping. That way, we're ready for the dyno. We don't have a bunch of little stuff we got to deal with on the way. But I think that's the next step. It's the next step test driving and dyno. Test driving and dyno, baby. But for the night, that's it. Black well, it out.